Hey everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, metabolicdoc.com and anabolicdoc.com, both of which you can get his book, America on Steroids, A Time to Heal, also available on amazon.com. How are you, good doctor? Excellent, Ron. Back from Florida. We went down last week, at the end of last week. So fun down there, but I do love to come back to the Northeast because I'm a mountain biker. Now, they, they party, they like to take you out on the yachts and stuff when you're down there, right? We do some of that, you know, like, I did a little bit of that, you know, we always do, it. there's a lot of going on, yeah. and after I sit in the office and I go nuts for probably 12 hours, I like to shut it down, and this time I did uh, scuba uh, snorkeling. Oh, okay. We got some snorkel stuff, and I invested in that. And um, we were snorkeling off the little reefs yeah. in the kind of murky water right in Fort Lauderdale. God, Ron, the water temperature is like bath water. It's crazy. Yeah, we get the, the cold plunge when we go in the, the water. No, I, oh, I know. It's just so fun. So we, it goes so quick. We saw more guys than ever. It's my second month only be open for business. Yeah. And let me make an announcement. So the next time we're going to Florida, we're starting to book for it right now. Got a couple guys booked. October 18th, Thursday, and October 19th, Friday, call the office, contact the office, um, go online, set up a consult, because this is what we do. I go down for only two days, once a month, because yeah. most of the business is still up here in Connecticut, you know, and for the Northeast, but Florida's growing fast, and um, it's awesome. And sooner or later, I'm going to expand it. Instead of two days, once a month, we'll do three days, four days, and then... I don't know, probably within a half a year or so, I'll go down one full week hmm. a month to Florida or, you know, but I still, I don't want to scare people. We're still up here in the North, you know, some people thought I was going to, like everyone else, leave, right. you know, Connecticut. I'm not leaving Connecticut. I'm staying up here forever. I predict there will come a day when you'll be leaving Connecticut probably, probably around November and won't come back till <laughs> May. You'll be a one Well, you know, Ron, days. I'm 54 years old. And there it is, coming back up. The pack is back on. I'm benching a little bit. Oh, no. <laughs> Ron, it's great. It is unbelievable what this doctor did for me. I guess so. Jeez. This pack is fully back on. This thing feels great. It's, I'm benching. I put, this is only seven weeks out from the operating room tomorrow. And I'm, I'm, I have, you know, the 45-pound uh, bar and 25-pound plates. Yeah. And I'm just doing and just doing reps, and it's like, man, this thing. I'm gonna take it easy. You know, I'm coming back like a tiger, man. So I got to come back carefully, but it does feel so good. It's incredible. I wish everyone that has a pec tear really goes and sees a really, really gifted, great orthopedic doctor because so many guys with the pec tears, they just get them blown off. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I've heard more stories like that. I'd say for every guy I know that's had a pec tear repaired, I, I've heard from like five five to ten other guys who say, I went and they didn't want to do it. They didn't want They said, oh, you don't need it. Or, yeah, we don't do that. We don't do so that. So spread the word. Like the, a lot, you know, doctors, everyone, you know, or any guy can repair the bicep, yeah. the rotator cuff, you know, and all this and that. But it, it, I found out that, it, that a lot of doctors don't know what to do and they just say, nah, we don't, re we don't repair that. Oh, really? <laughs> Bullshit. Unbelievable. So I had a little muscle tear today, doctor. What? Well, it's nothing new. I tear, I tear some, I have some kind of minor tear probably three to five times a year. It's nothing crazy. I was uh, squatting 315, which not, it's not, that's not a crazy weight for me. It used to be a warm up for me on the way to four and five plates for many years. But uh, going down on, I don't know, fifth, sixth rep, something like that, I felt the origin of my vastus medialis. Just go ping. Ooh. I dumped the weight. You know, not a full. It's not a full tear. It's nothing crazy like that. But yeah, these things happen. Could it be the statin? Oh, Ron. Can I blame the statin, Doc? You know what, Ron? I'm telling you. So let's talk about that a little bit. Hmm. You possibly can. We don't have data for it, and that's why I'm going to make an announcement that I'm making a move to PCSK9 medicines. Hmm. So I'm changing over to those very complicated uh, molecular medicines that are injected every 12 weeks, and I'll let people know how I'm feeling on that. I started one yesterday. Okay. Yeah. 
So it, it's it, they're new. They're called PCSK9, and they've been out there for three or four years. The two drugs are called Repatha yeah. and Proutent, mm -hmm. and I'm fortunate enough that I'm doing, I'm trying these, and they will take the cholesterol down on a standard dose. They'll cut it in half, and the, the data has shown us over a couple of years that for someone that's already had a heart attack or had an intervention, like a stent placed or a bypass surgery, mm -hmm. and they're on statins and even maybe Zadia, and they weren't fully protected, that this medicine added to that regimen provided uh, so, so a really serious protection, and, and that's all we could say. So that's called secondary prevention. Yeah. The guys like me and you, where, where we haven't had a heart attack, we haven't had a stent placed or a bypass surgery, which is all from acute, it's called acute coronary syndrome, where you go into the hospital with chest pain, and they've discovered that you're either having a heart attack, or you had one recently, or that you're having a near heart attack and that your vessels are closing down and your heart is kind of fighting for oxygen, mm -hmm. but you haven't, you haven't killed, you haven't been completely closed off in that coronary artery and your heart is not, you haven't had a heart attack. So I know it's complicated, but that's, so it's, it's, that's called acute coronary syndrome. And again, this is very complicated. Only emergency room doctors and cardiologists and very good internists will know about this or someone that's had it. Mm -hmm. and so. When, when, when people show up to the ER, they start, they start running, they start doing troponins, and they look in EKG, and they're making a decision within sec minutes, do you need to go to the cath lab? Hmm. And, and so that's what they're, they're, they're making this decision. And then, so if, you, if a person has had an event, which means, again, they've had a blockage, that they've had a heart attack or a blockage enough, and they get a stent or a bypass surgery, yeah. And that's where these medicines have been very helpful in protecting people further. Hmm. So I got to be very careful because I'm all teed up on these meds now. And when the when the drug company reps come in, I know a lot of a lot of the fans, a lot of these followers, are drug reps. You know, the, you know those are right. Drug representatives are very smart people. They call on doctors with drugs with medicines, and they have to be very careful for what they say to us. Hmm. So, so these are typical people. Typically, people that have bio they have degrees in biology and science, yeah. and they, they put their suit on and they're very clean cut, and they go to doctors' offices. So, I've talked in the last month or two. I've talked to both of the drug reps for both of these. These are multiple billion dollar companies. It just it is what it is. Hmm. So, and and they're out there for years now. And then, so the market is moving from like death prevention. Yeah to prevention for guys like us, women like us, people that have risk factors, and like me and you, a little bit of plaque in the artery, yeah. and we're on statins, and you can't tolerate hmm. Ron, I'm telling you, man, so it's really, the, the, it does affect the muscles. Look, I've torn this, I've torn everything, and this is why I said, I'm gonna go on, and I'm fortunate that I, with my insurance and with my care, my doctors, I'm fortunate that I, I have access to these medicines. Right. So I'm going to let people know that, you know, what's going on with me, and I'm hoping that I don't have to take a statin ever again, Rob. Huh. Wow. But I also, but I don't want to have, I want I don't want to be left naked. I want to have protection so I don't have a heart attack. So PS, what is it? PS? P, PC, PCSK9. It's yeah. called Proluent, Proluent. And, and or Rapatha. Okay, those are the those are the trade names. And okay. yeah, those are those are the, the brand names. And these are poly these are multi those are molecular these are medicines. You know, like Humira. Have you heard of Humira? Of course. Yeah, the TV so, commercials on all the time. Yep. So so these are medicines that are formulated similar, where they're they're monoclonal antibodies. This is the new stuff, guys. We're moving away from pills. This is very focused uh, science. It's billion-dollar science. Hmm. That it's very focused, and it goes after a receptor that's involved with basically holding down LDL, and they let it loose, and then it ba your body basically, without this break, it's kind of it's inhibiting an inhibitor. So it just it lets it go, and then this natural process allows the body to just dump 
and keep your LDL super so low that the theory is that in and in mammal studies and in actually human studies, you, you, if you have if your LDL is like say under thirty, it, almost in the single digits or near zero, yeah. that's a big. That's not the full reason why people have heart attacks, but it's it's certainly part of the reason, and that's why we use all these drugs, right, to lower LDL. Yeah. So in the end. This is a medicine. It's going to be very powerful. I'm just telling. I'm giving the secrets early that this is going to be looked at. That this is going to be getting people off statins, or adding. There are people that are they're on max dose statins, Ron, yeah. and they either can't take the effects of it because they just they they freeze up and they break down yeah. muscle muscle wise, and they're not bodybuilders. Right. They're just l l regular people that can't they they can't walk. They're like these medicines are like I, I'm freaking frozen up. I this is real. So it's called statin-induced myalgias or statin intolerance. And it's a, it goes into the skeletal muscle. That's why my secret that I give out is, you know, simvastatin's poison. Never use it. Atorvastatin is not bad, but that could be also difficult to tolerate. And the best drug that no one's going to argue across the board for muscle guys is going to be Crestor. Hmm. Yeah. But I, think, it, I think I'm on atorvastatin. Yeah. So, so that's, go, five that's milligrams. Generic, but the, the deal, but you're on a small dose, so yeah. and, and it's and it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that it's going to hurt you. But you know, and you you had this, you know, you had a little muscle strain or a I've little had muscle, muscle strains for years. I can't blame the statin. <laughs> so Ron, and you're on a but you're on a pretty small. The max dose yeah. of Lipitor of atorvastatin is 80 milligrams. You're on how much? Five. <laughs> That's a baby dose. Okay. Yeah. So so I just want to get that because I always love to do the heart stuff. Right. On. So we haven't had questions for three weeks because we had the Olympia. All right. And last week we talked about the impact that uh, the Olympia decision might have on drug use. So we've been piling up some questions from your, your faithful faithful uh, fans here at M over at the MD Muscular Development No Bull Forum. Squat Junkie kicks things off. As a 51-year-old guy with asthma and being on TRT, I feared that my TRT regimen was useless and I would have to up my dosage. You guys talked about the receptors too. So... One question popped up in my mind. A lot of meatheads use clenbuterol not only to burn fat, but also post-cycle to clean up their receptors. I'd like to know if there's data to confirm that, or is that just bro science? And this is a new one to me. I've never even heard that before. This is great. This is why this show is here, folks. Yep. This is the show of shows, because <laughs> I'm the number one broologist in the world. Uh, well. So there's no question about that. So I didn't even know how to answer this. So I've heard this about the receptors. So I did some research for everyone. And where do I do my research? I don't call up doctors at Harvard for, the, for this. I go onto the internet and I talk, to, I take care of, I'm involved with some of the, some of the, the prep coach. I take care of some of the prep coaches. Oh, wow, okay. So I, I threw this, you know, you gave it, what, you, you fired this to me, I think, two days ago? Yep. So I asked a guy about it, and here's what we got. So here's what we got. So I, I love it. And I wish I could tell you who it is, but I can't. It's people that know. Don't need to say. And so and I, I got my usual dose of what they – and these guys are freaking brilliant. It's just – these guys have to – we just have to give them PhDs, and they should go into the – I mean, we're, we're, you, we're, you, we're, we're losing – these guys are so smart, and they're such – they're doing stuff that would help heal – people that have muscle wasting disorders mm. it's just so freaky so but then there's no but there's no real they're they're using kind of quasi science so here's the deal let, first let me define the terms so clenbuterol is a sympathomimetic it's it's a beta 2 receptor agonist and it's basically a thermogenic and it's a bronchodilator yeah okay so what does that mean in other countries, it's like if you hear, if you if you if you have asthma, you take albuterol. Yeah. And the albuterol is, is it sounds like clenbuterol. It's got the all in the end, right? So right. these are beta. These these are basically beta two receptor agonists that stimulate. And when you do that, those receptors are in the lung. The bronco diet. The, bron the bronchus dilates, yep. and it can save your life. So instead of your airways being constricted and wheezy, they open up. But what else happens? So everyone knows if you take too much uh, albuterol, your heart rate goes up and you feel like you feel nervous, right? So it's 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 going. It's an adrenergic nervous system. It's a sympathomimetic, so it's hitting the sympathetic nervous system, and that's why you get you know the clench shakes. Yeah. 
So, so heart, yep, heart rate goes up. <laughs> you, Ryan, you have clenched shakes right now. No, not now, but I have had them. <laughs> You've okay. Sure. So, so, and then we know it builds tolerance quick. So you have to like step up the dosing, right? All bro science, which I'm incredible. It's amazing. Doctors have no idea about this, yeah. but we understand why, and that's what I'm getting to. So. With this medicine, it's a bronchodilator. It also has other properties. Remember I told you guys when I was on, before med school, I was on a PhD fellowship at New York Medical College, and I was working on heart disease stuff with animal models. And one day, I looked in the lab, and I saw that the chief had a bunch of clenbuterol. Hmm. And he was looking at clenbuterol for Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Wow. And he was, he was, he, we, we had these bovine hearts we had to cut up in pieces and we had to put them in the baths and we had to make different molar concentrations uh, with clenbuterol. I told you guys that I, I did my math wrong. I took some of my own clenbuterol <laughs> and I ended up sitting in the class. And my heart rate was literally 180 beats per. And I, I almost went to the ER and I was just like, it, I, I had to go out of the class. I got to leave everyone. I sat in my car for probably two hours drinking like, Cokes and like, <laughs> and just like until it wore off, thank God. But so the clenbuterol is like no joke. So th this medicine. So I, here's what the guys told me. So that that's the real science. I always have to do the science first. Right. So that's the real science. It it, it may have other. It it's a it does burn fat. So so the, it's a thermogenic, Ron, and you know it's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's no and the chicks like it because it's not going to grow a, a beard or a mustache, you know. So the chicks love Clen. Oh my God. Okay, so so this is now we're mixing like the bro science stuff, and the docs are going really. Yeah. So, and it, it but it's probably a little bit anabolic. Mm. So it does it now. The the argument for the bro science guys and for this guy Squat Junkie is, what is it doing to the anabolic receptor to the androgen receptor? Yeah. So so the argument will be. It does nothing. It's a it's it's a sympathomimetic. It's hitting beta receptors and androgen re and androgenic receptors. It's sympathetic me mechanism, and it's very parasympathetic and sympathetic, and the nervous system. But is it hitting the androgen receptor? And I got I got feedback from guys that it is, and feedback from guys that it actually cleans the receptors. I we've known this and antihistamines. Everyone knows if you're a real broologist guy that you cut, you step off of steroids, you step them up, you step them down, you switch them around, you come off. Coming off is going to clean receptors. Hmm. So, but, it, and we don't even understand, so there's no science. So is this going to somehow facilitate coming off and, and switching and altering the receptors so at a certain point in the future, you respond better to the steroids? Yeah. The answer is we have no idea, but it hmm. may actually work because it's really altering, it probably does get into the skeletal muscle. Again, this is after years of, this is, I, I get this question, I've, I've had this question for 10 years. Hmm. It's doc, does clenbuterol do it? It seems like it does. Does, does, does different antihistamines do it? So I told, remember I told you that? Antihistamines. Yeah, antihistamines. Mm -hmm. yeah so I mean, I've been seeing these questions, and again, it got, the Steve, we don't have legitimate studies that are blinded and peer, you know, we don't, so if a guy, imagine this, you're coming off a cycle of, of steroids, you're, you're using clenbuterol, you know, you're getting a thermogenic effect or you're, you know, you're having receptors, you're having side effects with shakiness or whatever it is, and then you're coming, so you're doing something else for, and you're adding this drug, clenbuterol or, or some kind of antihistamine, and then in the future, you're then going back on steroids and you're saying, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we. I mean, it, the study is not controlled. Yeah. Did it, did so it work because of the clenbuterol or just because you took time off steroids? Who I mean, knows? so if it, it, what a great, again, this is one of the 100 studies I want to do. What a, <laughs> I think you want to do a 1,000 study. studies, Doc, 1,000. You're coming, into, you're coming with, we're going to open a lab, come on. So if anyone, wants to, if anyone wants to fund it, by the way, I'll stop everything for about 25 mil, and Ron's going to come with me, and we're done. So and I'm not kidding. I'm in a cage I, with the bunnies. I'll be your guinea pig. I love what I do, but we're gonna open. We'll open. We'll go out of the country and we'll do ethical. What what I believe are gonna be ethical studies and like, the, but we're not. No one's doing them. And this would be a good study. I, this is not unethical. So it would be interesting. Get men off steroids and see. Forget clean clean the receptors so they can do steroids again. What about using these medicines so they they don't lose muscle tissue and they don't they don't suffer. 
and have anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism because mm. this is an anabolic. There are the reason why I found it in a Duchenne's muscular dystrophy lab with a PhD guy is because it appears to be anabolic. Hmm. I left the lab early because I decided to go to bo to go pre med because I was like, see you later, PhD guys. I want to be a doc. I want to be a medical doctor, not a. I don't want to be a, a scientist. Right. So that this is this is 1994. So, but I never knew what happened. What his conclusion was is. This drug, clenbuterol, truly anabolic. It's not androgenic, right? You know that, right? Right. So it's not male secondary sex. It's not an anabolic androgenic steroid, but it may actually, I think, I believe it is anabolic. It has anabolic, which means that if you take it, you're, you're going to build, you're going to shuttle in some uh, protein. You're, you're, the, mu the skeletal muscle is going to upregulate and it's going to build contractile protein and you're, you're going to hypertrophy the muscle. So yeah, it does have a mild anabolic effect. You know, nothing like nothing like steroids, but it certainly does. You do see results if you just took clenbuterol. You'd see results in muscle building beyond what you'd see without taking it. Is that true, Ron? Let me ask you a question. You think yeah. that's true, right? I don't know if that's true. I, I my theory on that is it might be just a case of people getting leaner and thinking that they're getting bigger because it you because of the definition it looks like you're getting bigger. Again, there's this is study number 101. Attack that one on. But do, but do you have do you do someone say? And I just I'm just a power lifter. But does someone guy say like I did clean by? And you'd have to do it by itself, right? That, that's the problem. Is nobody I know, everyone I know that does clean is on steroids too. So you knows? see the, you see these are the studies. Like if someone I mean, okay, good. Uh, so your mind's on some new growth hormone. He thinks I think it's working, but then I'm on the new gear too. So I don't know. I go. Dude, so, yeah, so, like so, ten different things. You don't know. So, the answer to the squat, I always want to launch you off to teach, and I, I launch you off, guys, to teach. If you don't like me launching you off, fuck off. <laughs> so, yeah, that's for the haters. So, like, here's the deal. Like, I do it to teach, and then I'm going to come home and answer the question. The answer, the question is, we have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Swaminator, is this the next one? Want to meet you? Yeah, Swaminator's back with a question. Swami. A fifty-five-year-old buddy could not get rid of some excess blubber, so his doc prescribed him metformin. He says he dropped eight pounds in two weeks. He is not diabetic. Is this stuff safe to use off-label? Do you believe it works to reduce body fat? What are the risks and rewards? Or what's wow. the risk-reward ratio? This is real medicine. This is not bro medicine. So let's do it. Metformin. Here we go. Guys know I've been involved with this for years. I take metformin. Hmm. So metformin is a special medication, oral medication we use, very old, generic, very cheap. It's been out there for 30 years. And if you cross the line and you become a type 2 diabetic in my clinic, my a regular person, forget steroid users and TRT. If you're a sweetheart in the country and you're 50, 40, 60, and your hemoglobin A1C goes over 6.5, and I don't even like 6.4, or if your sugar, if your fasting glucose is equal to or greater than 126 milligrams per deciliter, and we do the test twice in about a few weeks, we give you a hug and we say, you are a type 2 diabetic, ma'am. Wow. So what medicine do we do? If you talk to Jocelyn Clinic, who are the, the number one experts at Harvard or, or, or Cleveland Clinic or Mayo Clinic, the, the number one, the experts in diabetes in the world, you are going to go today, if you read the literature, you will be placed on metformin. Hmm. Not metformin, insulin. Not insulin. No, my God, no. We, we end up, so, but if you're a type, if you're a juvenile or type 1 diabetic and you're, Unfortunately, this happens to people usually very, very young when they're when they're seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and they, they get very sick. They end up in the ER, and we test their sugar in, in in the blood, and we say, "I'm so sorry, but your son or your daughter is is a di full a full diabetic." Hmm. Now that that's because of the absence of insulin. Right. And that's basically an autoimmune effect from your body's reset. You you attack your body's immune system. And we think it's, a, it's an over-responsive and hyper-responsive immune system. It's a hyper-immune response with your immune system. It's an autoimmune phenomenon. And your, your body's uh, immune system attacks the beta cells of your pancreas where you produce insulin. And then you can, you, you have no, over a very short period, you have no insulin production. So just eating regular food, they get their sugars go up to 700. You know, and they're obtunded. Obtunded means when they come in, they're 
It look everyone thinks on I've, I've diagnosed I've worked in Hartford in the inner city and in New York City for years and years and years. They are, they unfortunately come into the hospital young. We think of it right away, and usually if they call nine one one because they, they think, that's funny. That's awesome, Rod. They, they all day. If, so they, they go in the again. We're back in the ER, and they 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 are they're sleepy or they're tired or they feel they think they have a stomach bug because they're sick. They're throwing up, and it turns out that they're diabetic. Hmm. So so that means you have no insulin. Okay, that's about 10% of diabetics in America. Oh, wow. 90% of, of diabetics in America is just living the dream. You're in, you're, you're in America. You're, yeah. you're, you're getting older. You gotta, have you been in America? Have you looked around America, Ron? Oh, boy, we got some tubbies. We got some fatties in America. We got some, we got, we got some tubbies. Mm. So, hey, it's America. So those people, based on their genetics and typically as you get older, they, we watch sugars. And we watch the sugar in the A1C. We hope that these people have primary care, which which what I do, right? But not much anymore. But I still do a few. And we, but I watch sugar. And then their sugar goes up and up and up. And then they're pre-diabetic first. And we say, please cut the carbs down. Be like a bodybuilder. Bodybuilding's not bad. Bodybuilding's good. Yeah. The, the, the drug use can be bad, but bodybuilding is a beautiful, a beautiful, a great lifestyle. Natural bodybuilding, I think that's the healthiest thing. Unless you it's know. the healthiest thing in the world. Yeah. So, 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 and these, we watch the sugar go up. And it, so at a certain point, and then we say, please lose weight. You know, please cut the carbs down. Please do the diet that you should do and exercise. Right, Ron? Yeah. And then, then they get older or they can't eat. You don't let them suffer. And then when they, my patients get up to a point where they're pre-diabetic, oh, you, I, I just started a patient today. Uh, uh, that's pre diet His A1C is five seven. He's tried to lose. I started him on metformin. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what is met? So what is metformin? It's an or it's an it's a it's an oral drug. How does it work? It it actually is an insulin sensitizer. There's three mechanisms. Mechanism the most powerful and most known mechanism is it sensitizes your insulin to work better in your body, versus uh, against and with insulin, sugar, and what's called tyrosine kinase receptors that are mainly in your gut. And, and yes, I did a whole thing on bubble guts and stuff, and it's all part, it's all part of this, yeah. but it's, it allows your insulin to work better. And let me tell you something, it freaking works. It works. Don't take it if you don't need it. But so as far as the mechanism for type 2 diabetes, that's the mechanism. And it also, it also blocks the uptake in the GI tract, and it also it also blocks the effect of gluconeogenesis in the liver. There you go. Three mech if you read, those are the three mechanisms. But there's other mechanisms that are called pleiotrophic mechanisms that are unknown. I just pleiot and those are so we look at the data for years, and, and this has been around for 20, 30 years. We looked at data. This is real, real, real scientific data, clinical data. Apart from improving the glycemic index, which is going to improve and give you heart protection anyway, because if you're a diabetic, you're in trouble. Yeah. So, so we know this, but apart from that, we saw that people that were on metformin had a disproportional benefit from being protected from heart disease. They got ripped. So they, they got, but hold on. So the first thing is I need my models. This is my new studio. I need my models in here. So it protects the, this is true folks, if I get shot tomorrow because I'm giving all the secrets, just know that game on. No, Ron, I'm serious. I may get shot for this stuff. Oh my no, 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 because it's, why not? Shoot me for it because you know what? It's free and it's free stuff and it's cheap as crap and people should be using this medicine. Now, see your doctor. And if you don't, if your A1C is 4.9 or 5.1 or 5.2, or, you don't need it. But if you're getting older and you're pre-diabetic, you're not diabetic yet. You better go see, and if a doctor doesn't give it to you, remind him to go read up some medical literature because there's been studies that are very conservative that prove if you're pre-diabetic, you should be considered for being on metformin early to prevent you from having diabetes and not to mention heart attacks and vascular disease. So metformin works. Why does it, why does it lose? It seems like many men, including me, this man, using metformin in different doses, it, it appears to be you do lose, lose weight. Here's why. You ready for this? Yeah. It appears to be an appetite suppressant. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't. So, so it, it seems like it does work. You remember Fen Fen? Sure. 
So it does seem, and cigarette smoking is an appetite. So that's why people quit smoking. They gain weight. Yeah. Is this cool, Ron? Is this cool stuff? Yeah, happened to my mother-in-law. I should see her now. Oof. Anyway. Is it so? And then, and then, so gee, they go, Jesus Christ, I quit smoking, but now I'm going to have a heart attack. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, but please quit smoking because right. it, you know, you want to weigh out, you know, the. So, did I answer the question, Ron? Metformin is unbelievable. Well, he wants to know if is it safe to use off label? Like, if if I'm a guy who just wants to get leaner and there's no real legitimate medical know. reason. For me to well, the, well, well, so, so no, there, well, I can't agree to that, Ron. There has to be a medical reason. The medical reason is you're pre-diabetic. Yeah. So, but if you use it, and I, does it make everyone lose weight? No. I have guys that said, Doc, I'm not losing weight. I, I'm, hey, look, some people, if you read the internet and you see people, I've been doing this for, I've been probably using this med for at least 10 years, off-label on people that are pre-diabetic. They're all, I only give it to people that are pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. Now, I have tons of people that are diabetic. And they're obviously been on it for years. And then what happens is we have to step up the dose. Hmm. So, it, but we're using that because it's standard of care for someone that's a, that's a type two diabetic. And then we, we we end up maxing out metformin, and then we add all these new drugs, and of course insulin. And people, it's Ron, it's diabetes, man, is a tough deal. Yeah, I mean. So 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 can this guy? Can I rec? Is it safety? I can't make any of those recommendations. It actually may be dangerous. What are the dangers? Lactic acidosis. I mean, allergic reactions. It does affect the stomach, your GI tract. Um, if you have a, if you have, if you have something wrong with your kidney, it's not going to be good. Mm. So there you go. See a doctor. Fair enough. Derek Johnson asked a question, and this came up with me when uh, I was talking to a, a nurse practitioner a few months ago, and I, I mentioned that I occasionally would inject my TRT dose, my gear, into my quad. And she looked, she was aghast. She couldn't believe it. She goes, we don't do that. You know, we don't do uh, IM injections in the quad. And is, is it any more dangerous to inject in the no. quad than it would be no, the, that's the glue? that's ridiculous. Okay. Why would it be dangerous? There's no... I, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. So, so, so let's talk about the anatomy. Let's go back to the anatomy. Yeah. So you, you have guys inject in the, in the delts, the quads, and the rear end, and the glue, right? That's the three areas. I don't want to hear about the guys injecting in the traps and the lats and all. I know guys do spot injections, but you know it's funny. But but it's like so if you go to the quad, you use a small needle. Everyone can you can aspirate first. The reason why the quad, it's not dangerous. You're not going to get a blood clot. You're not going to die. if you get an infection and you don't treat it. I guess you can have cellulitis and die from an overwhelming uh, septic infection of the blood. Mm. But but you're not going to die. There's there's the problem with the quads, in my opinion, is. Boy, it's 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 a dicey. It's tender, and so it's not it's not dangerous. It just it, it couldn't be. It's a nuisance, and it seems like guys injecting the quads. And some guys love it, and some guys don't. It's just an art. That's an art to medicine that they do it. They don't because every once in a while they have a bad injection, and it's super painful. Yeah. And they don't right. Okay, you know what we call it when you get a bad injection that's painful for so many a few days, and you have to basically walk on one leg. We call it pirate leg because you're oh pirates have the wooden leg and like ah, they walk around on one leg. Pirate leg. That's all. Awesome. This is this is the best. I think this is the best show in the world. It's like the doctor meets the broologist. You know, it's like. Oh man. So a lot of guys actually call up. You know, they've been doing it. And they go, Doc, I don't know if if it's an infected. So if it looks red and swollen and it doesn't go away, it's it's a cellulitis. So you treat it with antibiotic. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Here's a, I think we've addressed this in. In various ways before, but it's going to always keep coming back. Stingray 23. What compound or compounds could someone use in a small dose along with their TRT dose of 125 milligrams uh, test a week and still have good blood work? I love that. I love that. They're always trying to slip it in on me. Oh, no, D ball, Anadrol. I don't, I mean, I mean, I mean, God, I mean, what a question is that? What do they want me to say? Um, Anavar, Winstrol? I mean, it's just like, how would you respond to that, Ron? I mean, the only way to know is to is to try a little dose and get your blood done and see how your blood looks, right? It, it is. You know, again, we have no, we have no, first of all, the, you know, he's on an anabolic steroid, which is testosterone, and he's on basically a TRT dose. Yeah. And he, he obviously wants... 125 milligrams a week. That's, oh boy. that's obviously, that's right. That's, that's, we'll call that TRT dose. So it's like, and then he wants to add to that because he wants some more muscle growth or something. So, 
I mean, what? A, so you're talking about stacking steroids, either in intermuscular or other, either I am either intermuscular or oral steroids. So this has been going on for 40 years. So here's how I would address the question. You can, I don't recommend doing it. I don't prescribe that. That's that's steroid use. Right. So what other what the the question is, what compounds can someone doing on safely run in small doses? Yeah. That's never been that's never been studied ever ever ever, and that's an ethical question. Well, what are you doing it for? You're building muscle. Well, what are you building if you're an if you're an old person and you have muscle breakdown and you have age related sarcopenia? And we need beyond just we need drugs to keep your legs strong so you can stay home, and not have to be put in a nursing home. That, that's that's a, an ethical question for my for the culture and for the for our community, and for, not the body. But that's a, that's we should be answering that if we can keep someone's legs strong, not to squat four or five for twenty, which is not a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. But they're old and they're weak and their legs are frail and they they fall and they can't get up. So. Why don't we studying this? So that's my ethical question. But I mean, you, you know, it's like anything else. Don't, if you if you do the, if you did ten milligrams of Vanivar once a day, once a week, on top of that, is that safe? It's probably safe. Well, it's ten not milligrams gonna, once a week. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> so, but Ron, I'm not kidding. So, and then it's how about twice a week? Mm, no, oh, still not. How really. about how about every other day? So, and then how about ten milligrams a day? So it becomes this question of dose dependent variables what's the safe what are safer steroids i mean it's never been studied but everyone knows that probably not going to have a heart attack or be shut down if you do a little bit of anivar or winstrol it, but there guys will get shut down i've heard stories of guys doing pro hormones which you and i both know it's probably worse than steroids oh, yeah. and then guys come in my practice and they're shut completely down and they've done a few cycles of yeah test and anivar and it's just like this guy could do so much, but this guy does what seems to be a fraction of that, and it's affected him poorly. Not to mention, I have men coming in my practice that have stents placed in heart attacks, and they haven't even done steroids. Right. Yeah. So, so if they do steroids and it worsens their their cholesterol, blood pressure, and makes them hypercoagulable, is it going to progress a heart? You see my, you see my. I mean, we run. We we know. We know absolutely nothing on this yeah. because there's no, this is all completely driven, completely underground, which is, it's useless, it's stupid, dumb. Study number 103. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Our next question comes to us from the goon. My man, the goon. Is HGH more effective injected subcutaneously or intramuscularly? Ron, I got to throw a question back to you. I don't, what do I know? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm getting Dr. T on next week. <laughs> you have to. He's been he's been asking, and I've said, I I told him I'd get him on. I definitely want him on. Yes. He'll everybody. He will handle more of those questions of like how to use drugs because that's please he's not so much about you know doc, Dr. O'Connor is trying to keep you alive and healthy. You know, getting getting your gains is not his uh, priority. So maybe Dr. O'Connor has a medical license in, in America. Exactly. Doctor, he's over at, hey, I'm not putting down the Greek guys. What are they going to do to him? He's in Athens, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> send, send a task force from, uh, from the USA. Oh, America. my God. They're, they're lucky. They're just trying to keep the banks open at this point. Yeah, their economy's not doing that great. But, well, what do you think? I mean, it's first of all, my answer to that is, hypothetically, yeah. it, it, it's such a fragile, small medicine that's, that's reconstituted. It has to do, it has to go uh, uh, sub-Q. Hmm. Because of the capillary pickup. Well, I mean, everyone that uses it uses the little insulin needles. I mean, but, how, but deep, it, how deep are you going to go into a muscle in those things anyway? You know what, though? I'll bet you there's no difference. I'll bet you there's no difference. Yeah. I mean, it's just got to get into the bloodstream is what I'm thinking. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's like insulin. Insulin's another one that everyone does it uh, just sub-Q. But I assume you could just stick it into a... Stick it into your quad or your delta; it'd probably have the same effect. It's going to give. Yeah, that's what a, with, without using this to launch off for about twenty minutes. So the reason why we do sub Q injections, let's go all back to the basic medical science, yeah. is because there's different the capillaries in the fat. I would assume are, are 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 more readily available, and they will distribute quicker into the bloodstream. Okay. Versus intermuscular. That's probably less. I, I'm thinking myself. Do I really know this for sure? This is kind of an anatomical. This is a PhD in pharmacology question. Yeah. 
So let's get a PhD in pharmacology going here. And then it's in it. So, but there are capillaries in skeletal muscle. But when you put a depot, a testosterone depot in the muscle, you don't put it sub Q, you put it in the muscle and, and it leaches out over weeks. I mean, right. days to weeks. I mean, right. Half life is eight days. Right. To Just eight. rub it in really hard. Right, right, right. So, so, so it's a depot. It's called, it's called, right. It's called depot testosterone, right? Pfizer depot test. It's a good drug, right? It's a good drug. Depot test. So, so it's, but it's oil. So the oil, the reason why they've changed this ester, they esterified the ring, they changed the, 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 the chemistry that it, it leaches into the blood, which blood is basically water, it's saline, right? It's, it's aqueous. So it's going to leach, because of that property of oil and water don't mix, it's going to release very slowly. They learned that back in the 50, 40s, 30s, right. 50s, and that's why they started coming up with, you know, suspension was like multiple shots a day, painful. Mm. Aqueous, that's aqueous suspension, right? Guys still use it, right? Ah, get crazy, suspension. And then you have, then they realize that they can make a, they could tweak the ring, and this is real medicine, not bro science, and then it, it leaches out, it basically has a very slow, steady release, and even up to undecanate, you know, is m months. Yeah, so, okay. So I don't know, so, so sub-Q versus intermuscular, I think I don't, I'd have to ask the question to George. Garen, we'll, 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 we'll get that question all the way to Greece for you on Monday. Okay, final question from Fabian Jim Food. Uh, I, I, did, I think you did address this before. He claims you never did. Olive leaf extract for increasing metabolism and affecting the thyroid. Positive, good thing to do, or never heard of it? Olive leaf I, extract. I actually have to default. I don't know. I just don't. I didn't get the research this. That's all right. I, thought, I thought olive, I just have no idea. I think olive leaf... Um, was hyper was better for blood pressure, you know, like a, a blood pressure lowering. You know, some of these things can really work, though. You know, these some these natural herbs and stuff. Some of it's been working for thousands of years, right? It is true, guys. It's true. And then what the, what what happens is they work, and but they just don't work as well as drugs, and right. and that that's why like drug companies in the in the last hundred years they they just go to the they go to the drawing board. They look at the stuff and they go, hmm, how can we make that stronger? Right. I mean. Usually they succeed very well at doing that. Yeah. And that's why there's side effects and people, you know, so this is where we're at. Okay. All right. Well, let's remind everyone once again, Fort Lauderdale, you will be there October 18th and 19th, correct? Yes. October 18th and 19th in October. All the contact info can be found on metabolicdoc.com. If they want yes. to try to get an appointment with you, yes? Yes, metabolicdoc.com. And anabolicdoc.com is a page. It's my anabolic recovery page on the website, metabolicdoc. Okay. So all those people who message me like, ah, how can I possibly get in touch with the doctor? I say, I tell you the website, the beginning and end of every damn episode. Come on. Don't be such you a know, the metabolic, You know, it's like when I meet guys all over, I'm, I love my life. I love going out. Doc, what's up? And I'll go, they go, Doc, how do I get in touch with you? Anabolic doc. I mean, Come on. What in Google? Google? I don't know what to say. If you, you know, know what Google by now, you must be living under a rock. A lot of people, you know, Rob, people say a lot of stuff. And in the end, a lot of guys don't want to see me, be stand next to me in public. A lot of guys don't want to come to me. And this is, I'm fine with this until they're really ready to be healthy. And that's what I'm here for. And then we discuss what I could do for them and can I transition them to TRT and that you know half my business is the anabolic recovery and anabolic steroid related half of my other business are men it's all men are men that are, they just have low T doc I swear to God I'm not a steroid user but I'm on testosterone my doc's a nice guy but he doesn't know how to prescribe testosterone and watch my heart like you do right. so please you don't have to be on steroids to come see me Ron, you know I love this world. I, I think there is like a misconception that you only work with like uh, pro strongmen, pro powerlifters, bodybuilders. You know, they, you know, I'm gonna tell it again. You know, it's like probably like five percent of your practice, if that. Ron, exactly. Yeah. The super and the super famous guys, they don't come anymore mm -hmm. because I'm a career record. I'm not gonna get when I hear insulin and all this crazy. Again, I love them. I appreciate them. I understand what they do, but. I, I'm going to say I don't agree, and I'm not. I'm going to give them baby doses of testosterone that they're just not going to. They're going to be like Doc. When I'm ready to come in, I'll come in. Right. But for for the guys that are on steroids, 
I could always give you an ass assessment of your heart and your kidney. Mm. Come on, Rob. I'm doing. I'm starting. My next film series, it's going to be ready for this. Here we yeah. go. I'm going to you guys right now because we're blowing up, man. This, my YouTube is freaking everything. You know I'm doing some stuff across town with muscle and fitness. Don't get mad at me. Sorry, you know? I get it. I know. I know I'm, I'm never going to leave MD. I'm, I'm going to stay with MD. I'm cool. Do I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a media whore. I, I don't sign contracts with anyone. You guys are my first. You guys are my first. I'm never going to forget. Never going to forget. I'm a humble guy. Here's the deal. My next video series, four parts, it's going to be – Medical, and I did the first video, I did the first article with you guys almost 10 years ago. Medical mistakes while on steroids. Mm, I remember that one. Part, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it a video. Part one is the history. Part two is the physical. And I'm going to explain everything I do and what I look for. This is for doctors. So chapter, part, isn't there a chapter in there? It is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. So part one is going to be taking a medical history on a steroid user. This is really going to be a video for, I have so many doctors calling all around the world. I'm overwhelmed, over, fully overwhelmed. They care, they want to help, but they don't, they've never been trained in this. Right. So number one, and they're very, they're, they're squirrely. They're like, they don't want to, and they refer to endocrinology guys and the endocrinology guys call me because okay. the endocrinology guys realize they don't know what steroids is. Right. They, they're also humble that they're very good in diabetes and thyroid, but they really don't know testosterone like I do because they can't, it's all I do. How can they? Do, how can they know? I'm not putting those guys down. You defer to you defer to specialists like nephrologists all the time. I don't know diabetes like them. So 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 part one is is the history. Part two is going to be the physical and and what to look for in a physical exam on a steroid user. Number three is going to be lab evaluation, and part number four is going to be the overall comprehensive management. Yeah. So I'm going to shoot that. Oh, my God. I'm just trying to shoot by the end of the weekend, and we'll see it. Pro Maybe Saturday we're going to start launching stuff. Okay. So, people, you can get links to all of those, the YouTube, the social media, on MetabolicDoc.com. What's the YouTube channel one more time? Anabolic Doc. Anabolic Doc. That's so if you go to YouTube and just put Anabolic Doc in, you'll see my little face. Just click on it. <laughs> right on. Okay. Well, Doctor, thank you so much for handling all the questions once again. Uh It'll be interesting to have. Maybe I'll give uh, Doc. Maybe Doctor Teal want a show. Who knows? We'll give him one. I, you know, Ron, I have an idea. Yes. I would love to have one. Yeah, Doctor T, the anabolic doc, doc, and he has his own show, whatever you call it. And you should field. Give me. I'm not saying the real medical questions because he's a real doctor. Right. No. But 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 he's a different. Doc. He's a pathologist. They're a little. They're, it's a little different than what's going on in, in there. Maybe I'll do the medical questions, the heart related. TRT. I'll still take the steroid stuff. Game on. But if you want to get real answers to like what he's not going to, he's. I, I have to hide. I have to kind of avoid the questions. Right. He's going to go right in your face. Bring him. You should get him cooking. He'll yeah. he'll go he'll go right for it. He'll tell you what the deal is. I have no doubt he will. I have no doubt. It's, it's this is going to be good. That would be awesome. He's he's going to be fun. Okay. Well, that'd be great if we had the balance of Dr. O'Connor in the United States keeping you healthy making sure you live a long and healthy life. And, you know, Dr. George over there also wants you to be healthy, but if you want to make some gains, <laughs> you want to use some drugs to get some gains, he could probably give you some decent advice on how to go about that too. So we'll, we'll see how it all works out. Oh, Ron, that would be good, man. It's, it's I hope Blackman good. goes for it. Give him a show. He will. Well, I don't know if I'll even tell him. Maybe I'll just have the show and he'll find out later. <laughs> Ron, you're going to go for it. So, sometimes that's the way you got to do it. Oh, I love it, Ron. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out MetabolicDoc.com and AnabolicDoc.com. Pick up the book, America on Steroids. Great read. And that's it. Thanks for the questions. Keep them coming. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.